Wow. It's already been a powerful service. Maybe I'll we'll just stand for a moment. This glass is not working for me. Maybe that's to see the red in my eyes. Just in total silence, can you just look at the person next to you? Now let's try that again. In total silence, total silence, look at the person next to you, both sides of you. Look at the people around you. Look at everyone in the room. Now come back to me. And say, Reverend Glenn, Reverend Glenn, I could tell you some stories about me that you would not believe. They're true. They're fascinating. Some are devastating. But they make up me. To me, by me, By me. Through, me. through me, as me. As me. One more time. To me, me. by me, By me. Through, me. through me, as me. As me. And so it is. You may be seated. Nyla Ellison, can you just rise? Can you just come here? Your energy is so powerful, so powerful. Thank you for opening us up today for healing. We need you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. What a spirit. Thank you, Nyla, for leading us, feeding us, and helping us to move further along the journey of healing. It's funny, but of the five senses, the first sense that awakens in the human body, in the mother's womb, is the ability to hear sound. And what's ironic is that when we make the transition away from our body, the last human sense that leaves us is the ability to hear sound. Sound healing. Nyla, you're incredible. Sound healing works best when we're that open channel, that available vessel, that channel, that vessel. So we open ourselves up to God and to our ancestors. We open ourselves up to hearing what they have to say to us, through us, for us. That's what this is all about, the healing process, spiritual awakening, process of healing, leave behind all those things that no longer serve us, because it's very difficult for healing to take place in the midst of chaos, confusion, and the congestion of thoughts, internal and external, to us. Have you ever experienced chaos, <laughs> confusion? What about the congestion of thoughts? Just thousands of thousands of thoughts emerging on you, and you don't know what to do. And so you find yourself in a desert. Anybody ever been in a desert before? 
the wilderness of a desert, a desert place. Have you ever had anything that bothered you so much and it was so persistent in nature that you said, I just don't know what to do? Anybody ever had that moment where you came to that point where you just threw up your hands and say, I just don't know what to do? Tried some things. It's just not working. I meditated. I prayed. It's just not coming to me. You ever been there before? There's so many times in my life, and even now, where I find myself in the desert, that place where it seems bare and dry, no life. That place where I just don't know how to get out. And the funny thing about a desert, a wilderness, is I'm okay if I know the length of it, but when I can't put a time on how long it'll take to get out of that barren place, I get discouraged. I get disappointed. I get disillusioned. And I feel defeated. Can anybody go there with me this morning? Can you relate? I'm talking about things, persistent things in our lives, experiences that we just don't understand. But now, before you take yourself and all your belongings to Desert Avenue and make it your home, I, I think I want to challenge you to think about your desert, your wilderness, as a place of uncertainty but as a chance to have an awakened spirit, to become that awakened spiritual being. How many people want to be that awakened spiritual being? We all do. But something goes astray in that desert wilderness moment of life. Now, you can be alone, you can be surrounded by hundreds and thousands of people. What you realize is no one is going through what I'm going through. No one understands what I'm going through at this moment. Your closest friend, your spouse, significant other. No one knows what I'm going through in my desert, my wilderness. You ever felt like that? I'm going through something and you can't phantom the impact it has on me. Think about this feeling of being in that desert, that wilderness. It doesn't discriminate. Rich, poor, black, white, red, straight, gay, bisexual, man, woman. It doesn't matter. Because we have them all in here. All the different dimensions are right here gathered this morning. And the common denominator is we all go through the desert. We all find ourselves in the wilderness. That's the challenge. That's the opportunity. But before we get into Tony Braxton singing another sad love song, remember that? It's just another sad love song racking my brain like crazy. And I'm all torn up because I don't know what to do. And I'm in a desert, a dry place, a wilderness, and I'm trying to get out. And I don't know what it takes to get out. That's the challenge. That's the opportunity. This is critical. Because what happens to us when we stay in a desert, in a wilderness too long, we start seeing the mirage, having the hallucinations. Anybody ever experienced a mirage, a hallucination? Raise your hand if you've ever experienced either one of those. Mirage, a hallucination. 
because I've been in one space too long. My mind's playing tricks on me. And I begin to see the things that aren't real as though they're real. And I live them out day to day as though they were real, and they keep holding me back, harnessing me, tying me up, leaving me distant from my power source, the ultimate source. You ever been there? Ever felt that way? Mirage, the hallucination, the sense that something is there that isn't there. But because I think it's there, I won't go there. How many of us know we want to go somewhere, but because of past experiences that we tie our current experience to, we hallucinate. We see the mirage in front of us, and we don't go forward. That's the story of my life for many years. One to be more, to do more, to have more, but convincing myself that I'm okay. If I stay with this hand that I've been dealt at the moment and just say, I'm okay. How you doing, Glenn? I'm okay. What's going on? All is well and in divine order. But you know that's not true. If we dig a little deeper, divine order tells us we're supposed to have and be more. And that more is an evolving ball that keeps getting bigger and bigger from the baseball to the beach ball. It keeps growing if we keep moving forward. The knowledge, the experiences continue to grow. Today we're talking about that awakened spiritual being. That is you. It's you. But how are you wearing it? Are you wearing it loud and proud or quiet? Because you don't know it's you. You really don't know your identity at this point in life. How many of us have that mirage, that hallucination of ourself? I don't know just who I am at this moment in life. I'm going through some things that's causing me to redefine me. And I'm scared because I've never experienced these things before, these thoughts, these physical challenges. I've never experienced them before, but now I am. So this awakened spiritual being that we want to come actualize, it's more powerful just than just believing in God. It's more powerful than just having faith the size of a mustard seed. Anybody ever heard that? Mustard seed faith? Mustard seed faith. Is that enough? Is that really enough? Mustard seed faith. You know how the size of a mustard seed? Yeah, it's the tip of your finger. Is that enough? That's a question. No, it's not. But I was indoctrinated by my mama, my well-intended mama, that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. But the mountains kept changing. So I kept walking. The mountains got bigger and bigger and higher and higher. I said, Mama, why are you send me out here with a little seed? It's not enough, Mama. I love me some Mama. But mama didn't prepare me for the things that I have to deal with on a daily basis. Did your mama tell you what my mama told me? The size of a mustard seed. But then what happens? She fall into the sense of struggle. Anybody ever been through a struggle? The thing about a struggle, it leaves you in this awkward position 
and you become tempted. Tempted. What does the Bible say? Three temptations that we'll all face. Only three temptations in life. And everything, every challenge that you face falls under those three categories. What are they? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, lust of pride of life. That's not a long list, is it? So you're telling me lust of the flesh. That's what I like doing. It feels good to me, and so I want to do more of it. Anybody ever did something that felt so good that you made it part of your ritual? Sheldon, you got too happy on that. <laughs> Lust of the eyes. What I see on the surface looks so good that it's appealing to me. It's drawing me to it. Anybody ever had that? A person? A place? A thing? A car? And then you get it, and you unwrap it, and you realize, oh, that was veneer on the end. On the outside, it was just veneer, but on the inside, it's kind of shallow. Can we say shallow? It was shallow and lust of the pride of life, which is, which is me thinking I don't need God or anybody else to tell me how to live my life. But these temptations lead us to that desert and to that wilderness. Then the question becomes, how do I get out? How do I get out of that desert, that wilderness? How do I? I'm caught in the middle of the desert. And all I'm pulling from are memories. 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 And those memories are causing me to have hallucinations. Seeing a mirage in the desert, and I think it's real, and so I don't move forward. How do I become healed? How do I hear the sound that's going to allow me to open up, to be a channel, to be a vessel, to be healed? That's the question. How do we open up to be healed? Jesus laughs. At one point, Jesus laughs in the desert. And he asks, when will I know if I'm a spiritually awakened person? Jesus smiles. Smiles again. And then laughs. And says, oh, you'll know. When you become spiritually awakened, You'll know because you'll sense the sun rising. And even a blind person knows when the sun rises and shines. Isn't that deep? But that's probably a little bit too esoteric for some of you, right? When the sun rises, shines brightly, and warms your forehead, you'll know that you're spiritually awakened. Do you understand that? No. No. It's a hard concept to grasp, isn't it? But try this on. Repeat after me. To me, by me, through me, as me. Think about that. To me, by me, through me, as me. Stages of development, of spiritual awakening. Michael Beck does a lot with this. Spiritually awakened. What does it feel like to be awakened? What does it feel like to know that I'm powerful? What does it feel like to be able to go through the problems that we face? knowing that all is well and in divine order. What does it look like to me, by me, through me, 
ask me. Listen to those four stages that we go through. This is the good part. Get the app out right here and take notes. Can you say this? Life happens. Life happens to me. When we think about life happening to me, this is what happens. We're always thinking we're the victim. Why do bad things always happen to me? Why is my luck so bad? Why do I take two steps forward and four steps backwards? Why does it happen to me? Why am I always the victim? Life happens to me. Stage two, life happens by me. I began to learn to manifest. Can we say manifest? Now, some of us are in groups where the whole idea is to manifest miracles, right? But what if there's no such thing as a miracle and I'm trying to manifest miracles? Do we believe in miracles? This reminds me of the Olympic game when the U.S. beat Russia and the countdown to the upset of the century. Five, four, three. Do you believe in miracles? But what if miracles are just natural states of being that we can move into? What if that's really what we're asking for through that manifestation process? Take me back to where I belong, where all is well, and I can do all things through the Christ that strengthens me. What have we been calculating our steps wrong, thinking that what we want to run into is a miracle when we're really manifesting the natural of who we are? By me, I use the spiritual practices, prayer, meditation, sound healing, and I imagine, I imagine the things that will make me fulfilled in this world. Notice what I just said. I imagine the things that I think will lead me to fulfillment in this world. And so we manifest usually the things. What do we manifest? I want a new car, a new house, more money, a new relationship. Is that really what you want? Think about it this morning. This is a little bit deeper. To me, by me, the next one's through me. Through me. I've done the work to realize I'm not the victim. I've done the work to realize I have power to manifest. But now, I open myself up, and I realize the universe is constantly conspiring for me to become more, to do more, to be more. But not in the human sense, but in the spiritual context. It's that I am made in the image and likeness of God. And so my duty and responsibility is to be God, right? Do you realize that? And so we move from through me, which means I open myself up. I just give myself, I surrender. Knowing that when I surrender, what I think is best for me is really not best for me. Because what's best for me is what the Christ in me is moving me to. And as I surrender, I'm moved in the proper direction. And I experience all the good things that I need to shine as a star. You got it? This is a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. But then it goes to stage four, as me. This is when we see that line. Demarked, God, me. God over here, me over here. That's what we do, don't we? Even in our prayer, God grant me serenity. God grant me gifts. 
God grant me power. It's a line of separation that we've drawn. And at this point, what we say, as me, the line is erased. The line is erased. And we realize I'm one with God. As me, that oneness with God. It takes me to a place where I know for sure that all things are working together for my good. It takes me to a place where, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I no longer need to fear any evil. I no longer need to fear any person. I no longer need to fear any illness. I no longer need to fear debt. So I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward knowing that I no longer need to have hallucinations. No more mirages. I no longer need to look in the rearview mirror. Because I got all this in front of me. And knowing as me I am one with God. I have all power. I have all goodness. I have all mercy. I have all grace. And I'm grateful. Have you been through a lot? Do you have a story? We talked about this. One more chapter. Can we go one more chapter? One more chapter, and this time we rewrite all the wrongs and realize they were challenges that presented opportunities for us to go to a higher level of consciousness, to be that open channel that available vessel. No longer a victim. Manifesting is not good enough. It's not enough just to go through me. I'm living life as the Christ that is me. If we can understand that this morning, sound healing connects with us and we really do start to hear spirit, God, ancestors telling us this is the way through the desert. This is the way through the storm. This is the way. Keep moving forward. Don't stand still. Don't stop. Don't pause. You got a testimony, and you're moving through a test. Eric Butterworth said, God can only do for you what he can do through you. So you're only limited by what you can accept in your consciousness. Open up your consciousness. Let it be limitless. God wants to work through you. Here's your challenge for this week. Ready for the challenge? You always got to have homework, right? You can't have the testimony unless you're willing to do the assignment and pass the test. That's all we want to do. 
So see, the challenge is to engage yourself in an intentional, conscious effort this week. I'd like for you to do it for the rest of your life, but that may be asking too much of you. And I don't want to burden you. I want to bring you no more problems. So all I'm saying is give yourself one week. Go through life consciously, intentionally. And as those experiences come up in your life, categorize them. Take a step back and ask yourself, is this experience happening to me, by me, through me, or as me? Can we say that together? Just say it with me. To me, by me, through me, as me. And if we don't land, that is as me. We know we have a lot of work to do. But if you're in that first space, life is just happening to me. Pause, pump the brake, stop. And know that all is well. Even in the desert, in the wilderness, there's a next level that you can rise up to. Let's say an affirmation. Can we say an affirmation together? I have awakened out of sleep. And the Christ within me gives me greater life, greater light, greater thoughts, greater power. Renaissance Jr., I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it but love me back. Thanks for having me this morning. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.